Uh, let's start a game! I know if the audio is good. Wizard it is! There we go. Seated yourselves and called for a stein of the finest mead. Your partner, Rani, is in a particularly good mood. Quaffing the bar's spirits buoyed your spirits. When things are lively, Rani will recount a certain tale. You were an adventurer, just starting out, and didn't know right from left. It was then that you first met.
What's up, Fubar? How you doing, dude? Basic movement. Ooh, I can teleport. Fancy. Get the game, Jack. You can play with us. Special equipment. Next stage, let's go. The music's really good. Shall I open that door for you? The rogue Rani inquired, after appearing from out of nowhere. He thought that it would be a simple matter to take advantage of your naivete and pocket some coin. It's my turn. Done. Hmm. Do my bidding, mortal. Simply. We did it! Tutorial down! Since that point, you've been journeying under mutually beneficial terms. You handle combat, and Rani handles locks. Leave tavern! You came to Highland as an adventurer. Like many of your fellows, you strove to challenge the dangerous labyrinths here. The labyrinths were every bit as perilous as you'd heard. Most were lucky to even have their bones exit the ruins. You don't currently belong to the guild. I Pretty. Registering. You can get jobs there and learn skills. You're the adventurer's guild. Let's go. What's up, Gil? Clad in full armor, the guildmaster, Samuel Joseph, 
stands in the center of the guild hall like a statue. He appraises you with a look and dismissively states that only worthless adventurers leave their equipment in disrepair. Your travels thus far have left your equipment positively fresh. You resolve. <laughs> we'll see, Nick. We'll see. Before return. I don't know if the audio levels are good. The guildmaster directs you to Morgan's Magic Item Shop. The magician is even able to repair magical equipment. To be deemed worthy by the Adventurer's Guild, you must first repair your broken equipment. Let's get going! Hey, cutie! How you doing? Fine set of stairs. And Morgan Lisley, shopkeeper and witch, welcome you. It's where I got every girl in this game is huge boobs. I just started the game. <laughs> there is no objects repair which does not fall under her purview, from ornate magic staves to rusted axes. Your character's boobs are huge. Why are you saying like you're in a porn? Adventurers come here not only for repairs. Doing good, Giddy. Doing good. Finally excited to have a day off tomorrow. Magic items. You will How are you? Often. I bet we'll revisit her often. Your equipment is now unmarred. You should return to the guild and see if the guildmaster deems you worthy. Once again, yeah, for sure, Kitty. Master Samuel Joseph stands in the center of the guild hall, like a statue. With your equipment now in tip-top condition, you request to join the guild. Samuel issues you a test of skill. What will you do? Your test is to help a warrior named Roland. Samuel says that you can find him in the ancient temple ruins. Let's go. To prove your mettle for the Guildmaster, you head to the ancient temple ruins to assist the warrior, Roland. A magic gate was recently found in the ruins on the outskirts of town. Use that to reach your destination. We're in the move! Let's go. Many things lie within the ruins of the old Elysian Temple. Some quiescent, some far less so. An ancient dragon spoken of in myths is said to have destroyed the Elysian civilization in one night. Fairy that was trapped in a cage. We got the stuff.
take it, nerd! Alright, still looks good. Let's bounce. Choo -choo yeah, he, his is a magical support class, man is magical offensive. You have made it's Conan the Barbarian! At the guild's behest. He is looking for adventurers who went missing in the ruins. For you to pass your guild exam, you must help him. Roland tells you to search in the ruins that are submerged in water. Much time has passed since the missing were last seen. He tells you to bring back their bones if they are found dead. Yeah, let's do it. I'm not gonna show it to you right now. Ow! I'll just show it to you. So I guess there's no pause. So. Alright, before I was going to play, I was going to. Alright, so. Here is. The Steel Book. It's hard to see it in the camera right now, but it's all the characters. On the front cover. It's uh, raised, like Nick said, so. See the bumps a little bit. Steel book. Durgan on the back. Okay. And it came with skill cards, which I was saving to open till the stream. So I care about you guys. Hold the phone. Let's open them up now. Huh. We got an Amazon. Are you cool? I know my camera's not the best for this kind of stuff, but we got a come on. We got a dwarf. We got the elf. Uh, the It's because it looks weird if I don't mirror the camera. Fight tell. Sorceress with the smallest boobs I've ever seen of her. That are actually proportional. And wizard. Although this wizard's a baller. It's like an old wizard. Can I be an old wizard? Nice to be Big Hat Logan. Those are pretty cool. I have no use for them whatsoever, but they're cool. I'll we'll shove them in here. Maybe Nick or I will take pictures of them and put them on Discord.
The Orc army is apparently getting here via the water pool. Their cargo is various articles from ships that had been reported missing. It's my turn. Oh, yeah. Meat. I got it. Voila. The background is so pretty. It's like we're playing a storybook. <laughs> Ray Gill threw me off. Hold on, he's not donating. Hold on. Unlock my stuff! But yeah, Nick and I can't co op until a later point in the game. We have to unlock it. I had to, Sugar, I'm sorry. How you doing? got this. We'll, we'll take too long, Gil. It's the fun of Bethesda games. Oh look, I found Nick's bones! You called it, Nick. You have found the bones of a missing adventurer. Sometimes the dead have been known to lips. So pretty. Silurians, what are they doing here? It's a dragon's dogma monster. Eat that pie. Harpy! With big boobs! No! No! 
Damn it! Fuck you! Throughout the area, you exit the area, taking care to avoid drawing the attention of any other harpies. I promise, Shikaru, just big boob harpies. Why are you sick? Okay, you do you, Shigar. You have fulfilled the request. Report your work to the Guildmaster. What's it do? What's it do?
Level three. Or you can just do whatever makes you happy, Shigaru. If you want to be a dragon, be a dragon. You return to the guild to report your quest. However, Samuel gives you an additional task. It is possible to resurrect the dead with their bones. He tells you to go to the temple to attempt the resurrection ritual. Canaan Temple is a temple dedicated to the worship of the goddess Althena. Proceed there immediately. Okay, let's go. So who's played or seen this game before? Chat. Anybody in here? You were ordered to attempt to resurrect guild members at Canaan Temple. As you enter, a kindly voice echoes from the back. You seem to be in need of help, a monk says, and approaches you. Chronicus, thank you for the auto host. Yeah, you probably dig it. It's a cool game. Even though this guy's creepy looking. Right, for sure, Fubar. I love the storybook storyteller aspect to it. It's really cool. The prayer of the monks sometimes restores the dead to life. The goddess bestows mercy to those whose time has not yet come. One, how can I help you? Allow this heart to be... Oh my God. Good. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death. And awaken them. The prayer reaches the goddess, and the pile of bones is made new. The adventurer pledges their allegiance to you. Yeah, get it, Fubar, and you can play with us. Like, uh... I'll be playing this tomorrow night and Thursday, and you have both those days off, right? So you can play with us. Think about it. Any adventurers you resurrect will wait Doge. for you at the end. You can now fill out your party with those who are waiting at the end. Please be aware that if you leave an area and one of your party has fallen, they will become lost. If you encounter What's up, DS? during your questing. Be sure to bring them back and resurrect them so that they can assist you. All right. Good. Got a big beefy guy to help me. You have fulfilled the request. Report your work to the guildmaster. Time to do Nick. <clears throat> Badges. After delivering your report, you can't you sleep. Then welcome on in. Across Samuel's face, you are now registered with the guild. You may now get cooperation from guild members. They may participate in your party and help you in completing quests. The Adventurers Guild has a backlog of quests. Because many adventurers are occupied with the Dragon's Crown rumors. 
The king and his retinue left to find the dragon's crown and are missing. Many guild members are now searching for them. The existence of this crown that supposedly controls dragons is disputed. But the king was obsessed with finding it. Samuel hurriedly assigns you a new task. You get the feeling that he deems you reliable and trustworthy. It's a request from this country's prime minister. The quest's details will be provided... Winston Churchill? Let's go see him! You wonder about the lives oh of the powerful people in that grand castle. You happily accept the job. Learn skill, do quests. Ah, skill cards. So, let's see. We'll cover MP. That could be a good one. Do this one. Nice. Cool. Focus on the wizard stuff. Help the honey buzzards. Is that a group of old ladies? Where the honey buzzards? Now we're gonna have to kill bees. Accepted a new request from the guild. You must go to the castle. To the castle. Let's go. Flanked by guards, you are led through the secure castle. Princess Vivian and Prime Minister Gustav. Look at this rapist. He's totally creeping on her. Prime Minister speaks a lot, in contrast to the silent princess. He asks you to swear to keep this matter secret. The royal scepter has been stolen. A witness who saw the thief described him as Tonic, a known bandit. Your job is to track down Tonic and retrieve the scepter. Also, for the sake of the kingdom, this must be kept secret. Rani whispers that he knows of this Tonic. He is well known and is based out of the old capital. You bow and leave the throne room. Secret mission. In order to retrieve the royal scepter, you chase the thief into the ruins of the old capital. Ancient temple ruins. Double check something. You're back. What's up, royalty? Hey, doing, dude. Hey, royalty. Uh, this game reminds me, Nick, that Nexon game we used to play. It was a side-scrolling MMORPG. You remember it? It's called Dungeon Something. Dungeon Fighter. That's what. This reminds me of a high-budget Dungeon Fighter.
That's good royalty. I am single. What? Ah, haha, you see one dating royalty. <laughs> good one, Fubar. Fubar, if you get this game, what class are you going to pick? I can give you a class list if you want to look. So many girlfriends? Oh my god, everyone's just flirting with me all the time. Like, Dave, you look so good in your loose yellow shirt that says I love humanity in Weibo Japanese. Cool. Many things lie within the ruins of the old Elysium Temple. Some quiescent, some far less so. An ancient dragon spoken of in myths is said to have destroyed the Elysian civilization in one night. Heck yeah! I know, there's a side quest here. I will link it to you, Fubar. Closest thing to the paladin is the fighter. Much easier with a tank class for sure. Thank you for the host royalty. You get to choose from your class and um, what color your outfit is and what your name is. Articles from ships that have been reported missing. Oh, I can do that. Oh, yes. Whoa. Nom nom nom. It's my turn. Ding. Let's go. Alrighty, thank you, cutie. Have a great day. Appreciate you hanging. Tank, Fubari, be a tank. So be this guy. Why? Okay, sorry, I have to comment. Why is it lame? Why does every RPG or whatever have to be make your own character? It doesn't. It really doesn't. In fact, a lot of the best RPGs are choose your own class. Dark Souls is choose your own class. 
a lot of great games or choose your own class, and then they give you freedom within the class to make it how you want to. So, just a little something. A little something. Don't call a game lame because it doesn't give you a thousand percent freedom. In fact, games that do this usually have more focus when it comes to combat and specializing. You make your own character, but you choose from a class. Except here's the thing, Gil. You never look different. There's probably 500 other people that look exactly the way you made your character. That's how it always is. With the options preset, there's always going to be someone who looks exactly like your character. So it's never truly unique. There we go. Hi, Steve. to this one spread throughout the area you exit the area taking care to avoid drawing the I didn't run into the things I did <laughs> oh, I did complete it okay I wish it would show who it's for before you can appraise it. Okay, you can. Cool.
Can I come? Uh, I can sell them other places. Okay. I'm gonna see what I want to equip to the stuff before I start selling them off. What's wrong with wanting to make a character look the way you like? There's nothing, but I don't like a condescending attitude towards games when it's <laughs> when the focus of the game isn't making your own character. Cause every time I hear that argument from someone, you I hate I hate putting down one type of game to lift up another design aspect. I despise it. So you can totally find a bunch of enjoyability in making a character exactly the way you want him to look. But it's not productive, it's reductive to go and call out another game as lame because they don't have this function. Can I not? Can I have stuff? Uh... I didn't say you said the game was bad. You called the game lame because it didn't have that feature. So can I not do it for my AI helper, Nick? That's all I'm saying. You could say it's lame if, say, the game did have a character creator and it wasn't bad, and it was a uh, like a shallow one. It's like, oh, there's no features to do a character thing. Why'd they even put it in here? Then you can call it lame. But you can't call out something being lame if it's not there. That's not the focus. That's what I'm saying. Thunderbolt! Welcome to my shop. What would you like? So I... I can't equip stuff for him? Before I start selling stuff? You like that game good? It's Walver Magicka stored. No! I wanted to see something real quick. I five. But I have glasses. I had glasses. The fudge. Yes. Welcome to my shop. What would you like? Ah, uh, okay. Hold on, hold on then. Oh, nice game again. How's that going? It's so warm in this room. I apologize, because for the next three or four months, it's just going to be me looking like a hot, sloppy mess. It's always so warm in this dang room. I even have, like, the window open, too. It's nice outside, too. It's just this room is just like a hot box. It's, whoa. 
<laughs> Give me a break. Blaze, storm, flame burst. Not getting it for Thunderbolt yet. So we don't have these? Storm. How do you put them in your bag? Please. Yeah, cool. Yeah, good. Cool. Hey. What do you guys think? Flame burst or blaze? All right, there's more. There's too much! Slow could be nice. I want to get slow once I'm level 5. Meteor Swarm? That sounds cool. I need some golems.
can I help you? You stand before the goddess statues, Jula, Althena, and Vernus. These statues have all crumbled. Texts say the goddesses sacrificed themselves to defeat a dragon, which caused their likenesses to degrade as well. Althena, the one in the center, is the goddess of compassion, battle, and odyssey, making her popular with adventurers. If your party falls during your adventure, a prayer to Althena and a tithing of your money will resurrect the party. If you are repeatedly depending on her grace, the amount you must offer for her services will continually increase. <laughs> Allow this heart to... Let's get a full party. <laughs> My bad. Out this uh, tornado spell. Oh, the capital! These are the ruins of the ancient capital city. It was destroyed following an invasion from the Northern Empire. Now it is a dangerous place. Full of dragons and wyverns. A little bit of overkill. So do the do the limited spells refresh at the end of every dungeon? I just want to know before I go buying more. Forgot to put the golems thing on. Dang it! Anybody now? You find the bandit Tom uh -huh. in a hideout amid the ruins, just as Rani told you. It is said that whatever this man desires, by thievery he can acquire. Rani asks, Are you Tomit, the bandit legend? Beaming, he displays his spoils and tells the tale behind each item. 
When you ask about the scepter, he says, that was indeed I, and goes on to boast exactly how he got into the castle. When you inquire further about the scepter, he deduces your true intentions and darts away. Pursue the thief, apprehend him, and reclaim the scepter. Is that what the gloves are for? You cannot capture a target swimming underwater. Watch for your quarry to surface. Oh my god, killer bass! I tried though. Give me all the stuff. Game is cool so far. Nom 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 nom. A lot of them. No. Do we win? Okay. You pin Woo. Tommy, who is so stunned that he's actually been caught that he cannot move. Relenting, he produces the scepter from his bag and hands it to you. I did. I was like, we're so screwed, they keep coming in! Ah, so close! You have reclaimed the Dibs. royal scepter, stolen from the treasure room of the castle. You must deliver the royal scepter to the prime minister at the castle. Hmm. 
Do it, Royalty. There we go. That's what it looked like. I said, I, said, I wasn't going to buy those spells if they didn't refresh. Woo! Woo! You see that? A lightning whip. He's here, he's just playing Monster Hunter Royalty. Cutie already left. Once again, you are led to the throne room under guard. This time, a man stands there with a presumptuous grin. The man tells you to hand over the scepter. You tell him that you don't know what he's talking about. The man's mouth transforms into a twisted grin, and he signals his guards. They inch closer, swords at the ready. What will you do? As soon as you hand the scepter to the man, you and Rani are immediately bound in chains and sent to the dungeon. A few Ruff, months Ruff. have passed. It seems your destiny is to spend the rest of your days rotting in this cell. You're not religious, but your only option now is prayer. You entreat the goddess Althena for one more chance. <laughs> Just kidding! You know what, I'm playing this the way I want to play it, okay? Press square near wooden boxes and barrels. I did that, and it broke the box because square is my uh, basic magic attack. Do I have to highlight it with the finger first and then press square? And we go. Once again, you are led to the throne room under guard. The man tells you to the man's mouth. What will you do? You fall into a fighting stance. As soon as you steal yourself for battle, the Prime Minister and the Princess burst in. The Prime Minister orders the guards near you to stand down. The man twirls his cape and leaves, as if nothing happened. You sigh. Relieved that you didn't have to shed blood in the castle to resolve the problem. The Prime Minister tells you that man was Count Dean, the younger brother of the king. He's trying to usurp the throne. The scepter indicates the throne's heir. The Prime Minister says Dean had Tomet steal it to deny the princess the throne. The Prime Minister takes the scepter and narrows his eyes in satisfaction. He pays you for completing the request. Woo!
The fairy you saved in the ruins appears before you. She seems to want to take you somewhere. You're taking me, Tinkerbell. Old Tower. The fairy leads you into an old ivy-covered tower. You find yourself in a cluttered room that seems to be a laboratory. Judging by the stratification of dust, much time has passed since anyone last entered this room. Letters amidst the shambles indicate that a magician named Lucane lives here. You find a message he penned on the desk. Lucane wrote that he was off to see a magician friend named Wallace in the underground labyrinth. The fairy uses various interpretive gestures to indicate that she wants you to find him. You accept her job request. You head to Wallace's underground labyrinth to look for the magician Lucane. Hey, Amazon. Allow this heart. All right. Hmm. All right. Oh my god, her butt is pointy. You know you worked out too much when your butt's pointy. Good lord. I wonder if it's better to fight in a thong. Thong, ta thong, thong, thong. I don't. Cause that's not a thing that actually exists. Pointy butts aren't the thing. <laughs> Love the music on the screen. Level 5. Level 3. Wasn't there a quest here? These are the ruins of the ancient capital city. It was destroyed following an invasion from the Northern Empire. I wasn't expecting that thing. Boobs is saying hi to you. Alrighty. We did it! Oh, it's really disappointing. I was waiting for a big cool one and a lame little half one. It's my turn. Die 
Oh, the mother load! Like sushi! I did, yeah. Oh, I figured, Nick. Raptors? So Fubar, did you want to get a mustard seed with us tomorrow? It's Michael's going too. That's not... They haven't seen Jurassic Park for the accuracy. Crushed him. It is almost as if this region has regressed to primeval times. An era when reptiles ruled the world. After defeating the Wyvern, you quickly leave the territory. Boom. Level out! Oh, we're so close! So warm. Well, 
Turn in the quest. Hmm, you're back. Didn't I just do it? Face these beasts and see if you can mount one. Let's head enemies while riding atop a dragon lisk or a saber tooth. You can ride them? How do you ride them? Ooh, we can do slow. Nice. I did Fubar. It's, it's been a while since I've thought about that game. Yeah, I knock them out and kill, ride them, but they always die before I can. Skirm. How you doing, bud? So how do I do with this, uh... Center here? I am level five. Nick only got a wave. Fubar got a fist pound. Playing favorites. Ah, oh, my allies. It'd be a real shame if they just stayed equipped. I should run like this guy. How can I help you? Allow this heart. Yeah, Fubar, if you want to go to Mustard Seed with us, just meet us at my place at 5.50. And, um... And, uh... We're gonna go over and pick up my sister and eat food, if you want to join us. Be me, Michael, and her. <laughs> Bam! Alright. 
Let's go! Everywhere. No! This is an I Love Humanity shirt from No Game No Life, and if Cutie were here still, she'd say straight skirt. And plus, Royalty would have made a I Love Big Boobs joke, so. I was gonna say it says I Love My Stream. There we go. Wholesome shirts. Who's digging this game? It's pretty cool. Is said to have been made in a single night with powerful magic. It is a dangerous place, replete with traps, and it bars entry to all who would dare. Oh, he's alive! Trying to get Fubar to play with us tomorrow. The trap was sprung, and the door magically fast. Uh oh. Slime creatures are weak against fire. The torch on the wall could be used to great effect. The clink of metal hitting the ground can be heard. Just like goosebumps. That's what Fubar said to Skirm. Out of the blue, a mouse darts out what? and leaps onto your arm. The rodent claims to be the apprentice of Wallace the Magician. Ah, oh, it's a Mickey Mouse reference. What a weird game to reference this in. He says he was tasked with caring for the laboratory while Wallace was gone. But it is beset by malevolent magic. You know, Wallace Disney. 
<laughs> Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat? All the crossovers! What's up, Kev? As you attempt to liberate the lab for Ricky the Magician. Ricky the Magician. The door to the laboratory is through this hole. Oh, yes. Voila. Oh, nice, Kev. That was fast. We busted through that. Oh, it's a puzzle. in the world when I know this puzzle. Yeah, it seemed like it was too tough for one. Might just like the combat stuff. Bye. Because the laboratory was being misused, some of the experiments housed within are now run amok. There's been a population explosion of mutated beings that spread their spores around. The labyrinth is overrun by. Oh, goody. My favorite sentence. It's my turn. What? So much combat! Was it Golden Axe or uh, Dungeon Defenders? Yeah. 
Yes, food. There we go. Now we're back. Golden Axe is fun. Doom Beetle. Got him. You found some bones. <laughs> describe it. The in the Kev, describe it. The tattered raiments and jewelry leave no doubt that the corpse is indeed Lucane's. Think. Think, think. I feel like I'm the most useless one in my group, though. <laughs> Level up! You bring back the bones of the magician Lucane. Lucane. Mortal Kombat! I figured slow would be good on a boss. You found Lucane, but he was dead. You imagine the fairy will be overcome with grief, but you need to return to her. Oh, it's an A level one. Cool. Could be Darkest Dungeon. Oh no! <laughs> Welcome. What would you like? I knew there were dungeons in it. <laughs> Skirm, you're a wiener! When you enter the laboratory, the fairy frantically flits around you as if it senses your uneasiness. I'm so hot. <laughs> Guys. I think I have to be douchey enough and buy a tank top. Do you think I can pull it off on stream? Will you still accept me if I do this? If I go and buy one of those? What's up, bro? I love boobs, bro. It's cooler, actually. <laughs> but I'm so pale! The fairy enters into a panic. She begins tugging at your arm to get you to leave the tower. You're the gun show! 
Why you gotta be like that, Skirp? I have muscles. I'm just really sore. I can't flex. Because I'm sore. Plus, they don't show up on this camera. I swear I have muscle. This camera is just very... The fairy is apparently attempting to lead you somewhere. You collect the king's bones and... Oh, we're gonna resurrect him. As you enter, a kindly voice echoes from the back. You seem to be in need of help, a monk says, and a I mean, you can see my, oh, my shoulder muscles underneath the shirt. That give you better context. You nervously hand the monk the bones of the cave. Allow this heart to beat again. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death. And awaken them. I swear, I swear to God. And the mirror in the bathroom? That's a good light in there? A flex like that? Like, and you'll see like a shoulder muscle? Actually there, you'll see an arm muscle? I swear to God, it's just the camera. There's a little bit of shoulder. And it's not showing enough. Yeah, it shows a lot better in the bathroom because this camera is crappy with the lighting, but... Yeah. It's a little bit of it. The king is shocked to find himself alive. Thanks you <laughs> He tells you to visit him at his laboratory. This man! How long did it take to draw this man? Good lord, he is terrifyingly detailed. That's the only time you people are gonna see me flex on the screen, by the way. The resurrected magician has returned to the old tower in town. You decide to see him to ask more details. The magician Lucane is waiting for you in the laboratory of the old tower. It seems that dying had an adverse effect on his short-term memory. Lucane can't remember why he went to meet. That's Bob. nice. Lucane is researching magic called runes, which are closely tied to spirits and fairies. Lucane introduces his fairy friend to you. Her name He's is just old. Tiki. She left the fairy forest due to her strong curiosity. He thanks you again for saving him and allowing him to enjoy life's rich. It's so fudge and warm in here, I he swear to God. His magic trinkets. Lucane says he'd be happy to sell you these items at a fraction of the normal price and answer any questions you have. What will you ask? Lucane says that he would be delighted to discuss this and launches headlong into a discussion about runes. Runes are magical letters that spirits and fairies carved into the world. You may have seen them yourself. Touching runes makes letters sparkle and float. Runes are a combination of three characters that create various effects. However, Runes won't work unless a spirit or fairy is present. That's what you gather from Lucane's long lecture. Before you realize that <laughs> right. Tiki is following you around, she seems to have taken Yeah! Number one ship, y'all, here we go. Me and Tinkerbell making magic babies. She looks like a little anime shirt. She will accompany you on your adventures henceforth. Fairies are known to be adept at finding the Yeah, they things. are. Yeah, they are.
A letter from the castle has come to you via the guild. Oh my god, Scar. simply says to report to the castle in all haste. Let me guess, Nick. Tinky's gonna be wasted. You have a request. You assume that the letter was sent by the Prime Minister. Perhaps he has another request for you. Called it! Called it! Give me ten dollars! Ah! I need some water. BRB, enjoy tiki bathing and alcohol. Don't touch her cherry! Chat! Ooh. I got with me some high quality H2O and skirm. I checked in the bathroom. Just make sure with the good mirror. I can't really flex right now because I've been doing some baller, baller. I've been doing some really intense workouts the past couple days, so I can't really even really flex. So I'll try to flex another day. I swear to God, I have muscles. A little bit. Twenty fifth of May. First Dark Souls remaster, yes. Really, Scream? Wait. Well, yeah, that's why I'm trying to get mine delivered to I'm getting the game delivered to the Amazon box, but I'm getting my guy delivered to my mailbox. So I'm hoping that they both get here on the twenty fifth. That's my hope. When is the twenty fifth? Kev bought that's my favorite game of all time is Dark Souls one. Kev. It's my favorite game of all time, Mr. Exos 1. And you have to co-op it with me. 25th is on a Friday, so I'm definitely working. But I requested uh, E3 off. So we'll be able to sit down and watch the conferences and take notes so we can do like a mini podcast again or something and talk about it. More ice cream, Nick? You have a problem. What happened to your old PlayStation? It's already like 20 degrees cooler not wearing these headphones. These things are comfy, but man do they hold heat. It's like 20 degrees cooler out in there too. Oh my 
I got this high quality H2O. See, Cam? And then you have to come up with me, because I'm co oping with everybody. And, boy, I know way too much about Dark Souls, Kev, so if you have any questions about number one, here I am. This actually, the shirt actually says, I love Dark Souls. Okay. You're doing Water 2 Skirm? Nice. I need to turn it down a little bit more. I feel like I'm shouting. There's different narrator voices? Oh my god. I already resurrected the wizard. I didn't pick up any other bones. I don't think. Kev, I'm so excited. There is nothing like playing through Dark Souls 1 for the first time. Ugh. That game is the best map design. PlayStation is the first day of release. Oh, nice. So it's mine. Well, it's not the first day, but it's Gen 1, I think. Alphonse! Allow this hum. Good lord. Skirm. Insert penis joke. Dwarfs look cool in this. Welcome to my shop. What would you like? I know it's ridiculous. The body portions proportions in this game are just ridiculous, even for guys. This is Riku, yeah, it just came out today? Is waiting for you at the front. Yeah, it's good to see you, Riku. How are you, buddy? You sent the letter. After your previous encounter, you can only assume that he's up to something <laughs> like this. You brace for combat. The guards have drawn their swords and are blocking the exit. Count Dean starts talking to you in a soft voice. He says that he has personally requested your assistance in performing a task for him. He wants you to scout Bilberon Fortress on the border. This underground fortress is a well-known structure. Originally built to defend against the Orc army, it now lies in Orc hands. Scout them. <laughs> Riku. It's my first time playing through it. It is a very dangerous mission, but refusal means that you will be at the mercy of Dean's guards. You accept. Per Count Dean's request, you agreed to infiltrate and surveil the subterranean fortress at the country's border. Let's go! Oh, cool, dude. <laughs> the art and music is really good. Can't get over the Amazon's pointy butt cheeks, though. I don't know how anyone... I don't know how anyone gets anything done in this game, by the way. 
everyone in this game is drawn like they're in like a hentai or something. I'm sorry, but everyone would be banging all the time. Nothing would get done. This game is setting unrealistic expectations for what's about to happen. All I'm saying. You telling me Tinkerbell there ain't getting on with a wizard? You telling me this Amazon ain't mounting a dwarf? You telling me? Love this. It's the best music so far. I love the singing. Like the operatic uh, singing like this at Loving Games. It's very a mood city. Why are This underground <laughs> labyrinth is said to have been made in a single night with powerful magic. It is a dangerous place, replete with traps. Cars entry to all who would dare. Mm Don't go in there. That's where the slimes are. I got a dagger! Shank shank! Let's pick up the mushroom spores. America. That's great to hear, buddy. That's cool. Good for you. Oh, yeah. By the way, for those who missed it, we did... It's too loud. I need to talk. I feel like I'm shouting. Um, w everyone voted on the next community-funded game pick. Yesterday, those who don't know, uh, we are working towards Vampire. So if you want to see me stream Vampire when it comes out, throw uh, some support that way. I don't know. I don't know how to do this community thing. We got a game picked. If you want to support it so I play it, it's there. So, yeah, back to it. Only if you want to, Ruth. I'm not asking anybody for anything. It's just kind of how the community fun new game works. Like, the first one was Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. We just beat it. It worked out well. Everyone had fun. Um, so it's just there. The community fun new game is just a way for... people to... basically tell me what they want me to play That for a game, you know, that I might not get to otherwise. So... Yeah. So, it's just there's like an extra game, like, 
if people really want me to play that game, then it's there as an option for extra support. It uh, came up that way because uh, Twitch only pays me like twice a year because it takes, you know, I gotta wait till I hit a hundred dollars as an affiliate, and then it takes two months for them to approve it for me to get the hundred dollars. So I'm only getting paid like three times a year or something. So it's just a way to get extra content that you guys want. That's what I keep saying, Riku. Pointy Amazon butts. I can't handle it. Nice, game gun. Nice. It does! Yeah, it really does. I mean, that's why we started the community-funded thing, um, was because of that. You know, I brought it up and I was saying, that, you know, it's like, I'd love to use the money, because anytime I uh, get money from Twitch through the subscriptions and stuff, it's because I use it for the stream. I use it for more games to stream, so this is just a more proactive way for people to see more content, basically. You're basically paying for more content, so... I used TurboTax, too. So yeah, that's it. Back to shouting. It was for fun and fashion points. Got to where it was good. Um, sorry, anytime I have to talk extended, I have to get the sound out of my head because uh, I have this plugged directly into the back of the monitor, so it's like 15 times louder for me than you guys, so I have to shout. But, I get some water, sorry. I'm just so got up with it. Um, God of War. I actually haven't stated how I feel about it yet, like on an official capacity. It's the second best game of the year so far. Only, but the year is early. Um, as the top four is now, it's Monster Hunter World, God of War, Far Cry 5, and then Celeste is what I got. Um... Really enjoyed it. Kind of disappointed in a few areas that really kind of bummed me out. Um, the fact that we're getting Kratos, who's actually developing as a character and is actually bonding with the son, adding the adding to the lore of not only his legacy, but the legacy of his child and how it's interacting in the Nordic world. Um, but also seeing how he's you know dealing with the consequences of what he did in Greece is cool. The combat redesign is really fun. Um, the It's really intuitive. I love the different options you get. You have to tackle different mobs. Um, the music's really good. The world, the kind of mini open hub thing is pretty cool. I love the world snake just sitting out there. Um, trying to do all the positives first. The RPG mechanics were pretty cool. There's some cool skills, even though there wasn't a lot of like, oh, I gotta have that one. There are a few that are like, okay, this is just kind of like adding extra flavor to your combos. Um, I enjoyed the armor. I do wish they could give him a helmet. 
But the armor specs and stuff were really cool. I always love that in games. Um, I enjoyed all the new characters we got. I thought they were all really interesting and how they played out with Kratos and Atreus. Um, they had really good dynamics and stuff. Um, so yeah, a very different God of War. A more mature God of War. I'm very excited to see where it goes. Downsides. Um, I feel like there is... I need a little more enemy variety. Um, a big one for me, a big complaint, is that God of War is known for its bosses, right? That's like, you go for the spectacle. I get it that it's the first game, but even, say, comparing God of War 1 to this, it's... I don't know. This God of War might have the worst selection of bosses in the whole series. In the game, um, there are three good boss fights, I think. It's the first boss fight, the last boss fight, and then the dragon fight. Um, those are all big, epic, cool, you feel the weight of what you're doing. I was smiling the whole time for that first fight, boy. I was like, this is how we're setting things up. Um... Every other boss was a troll or a golem or an ogre. It was just a reskin. Like, we went down to Vinheim. There's a giant awesome cool looking bird off in the background. And then you make me fight a troll that can teleport and it's green. I'm like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> You're making me fight the same three bosses reskin 15 times. How boring. Boss fights are supposed to be impacts to help keep momentum going through the story. Keep you pumped up gameplay-wise, so you're like, yeah, I'm feeling it, I want to keep going. But it's just, man, they just really, really needed a bigger variety of bosses. Another time, they could have done another really cool boss fight in Vinheim is when you're on the boat. And you're trying to keep the boat afloat. And you're seeing, like, Ghost Zeus. It would have been really cool if, if you were on the boat... You had to fight Ghost Zeus. So it kind of harkens back to, you know, God of War 3. Not only from a story standpoint, but from a gameplay standpoint. That'd be another unique boss fight to do that could only fit in Vinheim that connects to Greece, you know? Because he's dead. Um, no, I'm not looking at Shay yet, because I'm just trying to get this all out. But, um, and then my other complaint is that I really feel like they chopped this game off at the two-third mark. I really, when it ended... I was like, here, we're ending here. You're ending at a point where I feel like it was two-thirds into what the game should have been. There should have been a big final escalation that I really felt like was missing. And of course that's just me. I see where they're trying to go for it, how they're trying to connect it in. I'm trying to end on a more softer note before things get crazier with Thor and Odin and the other gods. Um... But it kind of felt like it went out on a whimper. They were hyping up Thor so much. The whole game. You kill his sons, right? Mentioned throughout. And he only makes an appearance if you go to the house and rest. As like a teaser for a next for the next game. And I'm like, really? Can you like introduce him? Uh, set the stakes to see how underpowered Kratos is? Like... Hmm. But yeah, those are my complaints. I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. It's a very good game. But I really... There were a few things that really let me down. That I feel like are really important for a God War game. But it's a very good game still. Lots of great stuff. I love that... love when game franchises reinvent themselves and become fresh and new and exciting again. I really enjoy that. But there's just a few things I was let down by, basically. Yeah, that's my uh, official review, I guess, of God of War. I wanted to take time to think about it and watch some videos on it and stuff, but... And you were all there. You saw the moments I enjoyed. 
Oh, they're they're making it a at least a two games in Norse that they're setting up for five games. So. And they did run out of boss ideas. Absolutely did. It clues us in on what happens, but it's still, like, such a weird point. I really feel like there should have been a little bit more of a stinger at the end. <laughs> That's a good game, too, Riku. Nick loves that game. It's probably in Nick's top ten. Hmm. <laughs> no, no. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. There's just a few things that really deflated it for me. So I kind of feel bummed when everyone's like, oh, it's a ten out of ten. It's one of the best games of all time. Like Greg Miller from uh, Kind of Funny says it's his new favorite game of all time. I'm like, good lord. I mean, it's cool that it's impact, it's hitting with people so big, but you know, I was really ready for this game to be like a nine, nine and a half for me. It just wasn't it was an eight and a half. So, a little disappointed and still really liked it. Nick, where would you rank Horizon in your favorite games? Yeah, that's enough of my uh, God of War review. You are all here for the Dragon's Crown. I just didn't want to shout over the game while I'm doing this. So, back to it. Top three? Wow. What are the other two? Nick loves the Digimon game, too. You, you and Nick need to hang out, Riku. Oh, really over here? No, Monster is not dead. Still very active with it. underground lab. Got two bees? That's not bad. Ah, uh, normal. Riku.
<laughs> right, Riku? That's fine. That's just what we're doing with this one. Just learning. How can I help you? Hey, we've got an elf. Allow this heart. <laughs> what are you feeling, Riku? All I know is that Morgan's magic item shop feels like a brothel. Bish. We got zero? The fuck? We got Thunderbolt, baby. Okay, that one next. There you go, Riku. Can I get a samurai class for this? That'd be cool. How can I help you? Could you please get a voice actor that matches your body? Thank you. Good lord. Is that why your boobs are so big? Because you're carrying that water jug on your head all day? Like, what is in the water in this universe?
Not my fault. Ain't no bit. Ain't no. <laughs> ain't no witches with jugs dying out here. Let's go. The Orc army presently What's the DSR? Bilberon, the underground fortress built into the canyon. The king's army has been mounting a fierce offensive mm -hmm. to try and reclaim the fortress. Ah! I was talking about Dance Dance Re Revolution for a second. I was like, what? You can get DDR, bro? You step into the enemy kitchen. A corpulent chef grabs a goblin instead of meat and suddenly stops. The cook, sensing your presence, stares directly at you. Luckily, her sight's not so keen, so she doesn't notice you. Eventually, the chef returns to her meat cutting. You use the goblin's screams to mask your escape. My golem! Three bones. Hey, come on, elf. The pathway, blocked with a stone wall, doesn't look like it would give way unless you bombed it. We're alive!
Really, gang? Man? That's weird. Not Nyx. I'm almost dead. From what? Nothing's hit me! I've been hit like twice! How do I use my dang potions? I wrote him! Dying everywhere. Here we go. We got lightning. It's a little bit frightening. Ah, uh, not yet, game gun. Any good? Oh, 
Ah, uh, no idea, Skirm. I barely played the original. Nick could answer it for you. No, Riku could. Riku's the pro. No, you're all on fire! Very successful area. This is an area connected to the sewers. This seems your most likely escape route. I saved her, we're okay. That's embarrassing. We moved through the sewer's filth. The reconnaissance mission went well. You gathered intel and slipped back across enemy lines. <laughs> we learned that uh, Minotaurs are dumbasses that let Axis fall on themselves. Among the treasures you claimed is the great sword of the hero... Oh Batman. yes, Javelin.
It's a pretty cool game. I'm digging it. You succeeded in acquiring intel on the underground fortress. This job will be completed once you report to Count Dean. You're not in a porn. Allow this heart. Allow this. What scream, scream? What screen scream? May they rest in peace. As you leave the temple, a ragged old man slumped in the road calls out to you in a gray hey. voice. Hey, I'm a man. Hey. <laughs> His raspy voice makes it difficult for you to discern if he's even... Are you alive? Who let a rad ghoul in here? Is this a Fallout crossover? Exactly. It's actually had a lot of details for me to explore. A lot of menus. You can give him a coin if you feel pity for him. Of course, you're free to walk away. He doesn't even acknowledge the coin. Oh, yeah. I've been there. Over. You probably won't be able to communicate with him, no matter how long you strain your concentration. Oh my god, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Aretha Nixasaurus wrist. That's right, game. Zoom in on it. I wanna 
I want to really picture all that magic she's storing in her jugs. This one's fire magic. This one's ice magic. You put them together, you get Game of Thrones. There's anti-gravity magic on there. Only thing that makes sense. <laughs> my, my mana stores are running low. That's when all the subs start coming in. You report everything you learned to Count Dean. Unfortunately, you also mentioned the hero's legendary sword. Naturally, he demands the great sword. But at least he's in a good mood now. He thought you'd just flee, but you didn't. It seems that he thinks much more highly of you now. Dean confides in you some of the problems in the castle. Once the king went missing, the Prime Minister began recommending the Archduke McNeil of Bulga to the throne. Bulga is an aggressive nation to the north. McNeil is related to the King of Hydland and has a legal claim to the throne. Count Dean claims that McNeil has been rallying nobles in Hydland to support his claim to the throne. That's why Dean hired Tomit to steal the scepter. He says that Tomit is extremely trustworthy, so long as he is paid. Suddenly, the Prime Minister and the Princess appear. It seems you are being watched. The Count glowers and departs. The Prime Minister warns you not to involve yourself any further. The Princess, as usual, looks back with blank eyes. Since you completed the job at the castle, you return to the Adventurer's Guild to tell them what transpired. Okay. Roland also happens to be here to report on a job. However, Samuel is not here. Roland is waiting for him to return. Roland thinks that he just missed him and asks you to track down the Guildmaster and bring him back. <laughs> no scare him. That should help a bit. <laughs> you look for Samuel, the guildmaster. He should be somewhere in town. Oh, how can I help you? Which one? Welcome nope, the he's not here. So he's not a perv. As you leave the temple, a ragged old man slumped in the room. His raspy voice makes you can give him a coin. He doesn't even admit you probably. Giant man in armor finishes his prayers and turns around. His pensive expression quickly turns fierce as he sees you. He tells you that he was praying because he has sent many friends to look for the king, but they haven't found the slightest clue. When you ask to help, 
Samuel just nods and hands you a request form. It's the same request the temple gave you. In a remote region, marriageable girls are disappearing one by one. The catacombs are believed to be linked somehow. As you leave the temple, a ragged is rust. You can give him a clue. He doesn't eat. You probably. To solve the mystery of the disappearances. Alrighty, guys. That's gonna do it for me tonight. But I'll be back on tomorrow night. Earlier tomorrow night. I'll be on at 9, I think. Tomorrow night. Uh, playing more of this. So hopefully we can get far enough to uh, finally start co oping with Nick. Alrighty. Have a good night, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye!